Good evening. Hello, St. Luke friends, St. Luke family. Um, we miss you. Saw some of you today come through the line, and uh, we miss you. Um, we pray that things are going well um, in your home. We are thankful that uh, you allowed us um, into your personal space through this media, the word, and, and worship. I keep saying to you, um, that um, this is an opportunity to strengthen our personal worship, our home worship. Yeah, yeah, I, it is an opportunity for us to um, have an individual worship that will empower the collective worship. Amen, amen. And for us to lead our families and be with our families in prayer and, and in word and in worship. Uh, if, if anything has come of this for those of us who are the how are of the household of faith, Amen. If your assessment is like uh, many, like mine, it may be that my personal worship had waned a lot. That my corporate worship um, was uh, the full thing of what I was doing instead of worshiping uh, with the family, worshiping. Uh, in my individual space, Amen, Amen. You 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 didn't know that there that that worship is is for us is evidence that we believe that God is present, Amen. And to be present at the church and I'm only there a little while and not be present at home could be problematic, Amen. Thank you for joining with us. This idea I uh, tried to say to you and I want to continue to repeat it. Hopefully you won't get tired that um, I believe that um, prayers, pr prayer um, and petition uh, follows praise. I believe that praise precedes and should precede, rightly so, precede prayer and petition. They are before, praises before, even in uh, the Lord's prayer. The first thing he does is Give God the praise. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Before you go into any petitions, he's establishing the praise that the Father deserves. Amen. And 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 and, and when prayer is heard and gets to the opportunity or the ability, when prayer can hang on up to the back of praise, it can go a long way. Yeah, prayer uh, that's holding on to praise. Thank you, God. Because oftentimes the things that we are praying about are the things that um, are trying to strip us, strip us of our ability to say, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. The trouble that comes our way, uh, comes our way to try to get us to shut our mouths and and fold our arms and drop our heads and not look to the hills from which come our help. Amen. Amen. In the worst of times, in the worst of times, God's people have given God, given God the praise through prayer, praise, prayer, and song. God's people have praised, Lord, I thank you anyhow. Lord, I praise you. In the midst of the dilemma, Lord, I praise you. I just say, thank you, God. In our tradition, they would say, Lord, I thank you that things are as well as they are. Amen. 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 So we welcome you and we encourage you to, in your home, to openly worship and openly praise God with the family in this hour, especially Amen. Bring the family. This is our ecclesia. This is our church now for a while. I don't know how long we're going to be in this configuration. It may be shorter. If we in the ecclesia in our gathering uh, in this virtual uh, venue, if we get together and just call on the name of the Lord together. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray. Praise and praise God. And how many of us, if we look around the house that God has Blessed us, we have something to thank God for. Amen. We look around, you know, think about the goodness of God and all that God has done. 
Amen for you. I know I do. I mean, and some of you cannot relate because you've always had certain things like uh, running water that turns hot or cold just which way you turn the dial. Amen. You, you've always had air conditioning. You've always had electricity in your home. You've always had a refrigerator uh, that was um, with full. You can't relate. You can't relate. Uh, I understand that, but there are those of us who can tell you. Amen. Well, God, thank you for the thermostat. Amen. So, so, but COVID-19 may be gripping you of um, some, some stuff. Amen. Amen. We're just thankful. We're thankful. We want to, want to give God, uh, we want to worship. We want to, want to give God some praise before we go into petition. And we're going to go into petition. We gathered uh, at home uh, in this hour with uh, St. Luke Christian Church. And it's all about giving God, giving God praise and, and praising him uh, prior to uh, petitions and, and prayer. Amen. There's a, there's a song uh, that I love and I want uh, you to help me with it. And these, these are the times when we need songs like these. Um, this uh, particular song um, was written by, um, I, believe, I believe she was blind. Brian, and she wrote the song um, because in her inability to see and others going on their way, I think I'm right about this, um, she wrote the song, Pass Me Not, and everyone else is passing me by, not helping, not helpful. Lord, I'll be okay if you just walk with me, if you pass. You don't pass me by. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, Lord. And while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I'm calling you Savior, oh, say, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art call, calling, do not pass me by. I call you Savior. Oh, Savior, hear my humble cry. And while on others thou art call, calling, do not pass me by. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Again, this day for being God and God all by yourself, the creator and owner of the universe. God, we enter your presence as humble as we uh, know how to come, God, realizing that you are our everything and you are our all. And without you, we would have no life at all. God, here we are saying, let your will be done. Let your name be glorified, God, in all that we do. God, we just pray that you'll have your way because you you know what's best, God. Have your way. Let your will be done. We may have to cry. It may hurt, but let your will be done because at the end of the day, you are our Father. We know that you're a Father who loves us and you are a God who's able to help heal and deliver. God, we just say thank you for things being as well as that. We thank you for the homes under the sound of this voice right now, my voice, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you bless every home right now, every every home under the sound of my voice, of those who may be riding in their vehicles, God, I pray that you will bless, help, heal, and deliver in the name of Jesus. You know the needs, you know the sources of the problem, God. We, we ask you to have mercy. God, we ask you to let your will be done in the name of Jesus as we enter your presence 
in that mighty name. We thank you for having a way to come to you, to you through the blood of Jesus Christ. We know we're not worthy uh, in and of ourselves. We thank you for making a way through Jesus that messed up us can enter your presence, God, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. God, as we come, it's a dark, it's a dismal world in which we live. We ask you to help us be a light in these dark times. Help your children spread joy in these times. Help your children be a helping hand in these times, a sharing hand. Help your children to pray for others in these days and times. God, we just ask you to have mercy. Forgive us if, of sin, God, if it's our ways that have caused this calamity. God, help us, help us, a amen, to, to repent. We ask your forgiveness, God. We need your help because we can't make this journey alone. We just thank you for the homes being blessed, for, 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 for the home being blessed, uh, even in spite of the circumstances, God. We know that you can control uh, the COVID virus. We know you, the coronavirus. We know you can heal the COVID-19 illness, God. We know you're able. We just trust, depend, and lean on you right now, God. We ask you to protect every home. We ask you to we bless those who uh, may be in the hospital, Brother Mingo Ponder. Hold him in the hollow of your hand, God. Give him strength. Restore his, restore his body, God. We pray for you can bash him. You'll hold him and, and help him to to endure therapy, God. We ask that you bless all who may be sick of our congregation, of our those who are our visitors, those who are our guests, God. Wherever they got they are, God, I pray blessings right now and strength right now and, and resources supplied right now. God, I, I pray that you you will soften hard hearts right now, God. I, I pray that you will encourage people to protect themselves by using the very means that, that we've been instructed. And even though they may not feel sick themselves or may not have a concern for for contracting this disease, God, this, this virus, I pray that you'll, you'll touch their hearts, that they can show respect for others. God, let us hear your voice. We, we certainly want to get together in the assembly of the church. God, God help us to do that. Uh, you have the answer. We just say thank you. We claim victory even in this season. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We pray uh, that you are blessed at home. We pray that you are praying with us and praying for us. We're getting a little bit um, comfortable with this method. I want to bring a word. I want to do a word, uh, a little bit of a word out of out of uh, the book of James. And I won't be long. Uh, the book of James, um, the first few verses in the book of James in the King James rendering tonight, um, this evening. James, um, the King James, chapter one, James, the book, the first chapter of James. First few verses you'll find written in King James, in a way, rendering of this particular passage. James, verse 1, chapter 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation, knowing this that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I'll talk about, just for a moment this evening, when trial, when faith is on trial, when faith is on trial, trying of faith. Your relationship with God is through faith, praying in faith. Sometimes 
that's put life puts faith on trial. Sometimes circumstances will put one's faith on trial. Situations, personal and social situations can put one's faith on trial through many mediums. Different things tempt and test our faith. Amen. And don't take that, don't take that negatively, because it can be a positive thing. I mean, uh, sometimes and very often we get to a place where we think we're strong in the Lord, and I would share with you that that's categorical, which means I'm strong in this area, but maybe not in that area. And so, oftentimes the Lord allows tests to come our way, so that we can. Um, see some areas we may need to pray, get prayed up or worded up in those areas because our faith falters in that, on that platform or in that category. Amen. Amen. Faith, faith is on trial. The writer, the book of James um, names himself as the brother of Jesus, James, uh, the servant of, of God. The servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. This book has been neglected according to historians and commentators, theologues throughout the generations. And one of the reasons that it is proposed that the book doesn't get the traction that uh, it should and that it deserves is because it seems to conflict with Paul's idea of faith or his doctrine of faith. In that, remember Paul says we are saved by faith. Saved by grace through faith, not of works. James comes along, and I don't see a conflict, but I see what I see is a, 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 a fleshing out of faith as it relates to practical. Paul deals, his letters, especially Roman. put a lot of emphasis on the doctrines of God's relationship to and with humanity as it moves from Old Testament to New Testament theology. Paul proves for us and demonstrates for us and teach us that the Old Testament is a pointer that's pointing to the point, which is Christ. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 is working to get uh, clarity in, in 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 the fact that um, the Old Testament, the 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 temple, the sacrifices, the the showbread and the, the feast and ceremonies were symbols in the Old Testament of what becomes real in the New. It was a pointer who was pointing to the point. Old Testament was a, was a pointer pointing to the point, which is Christ. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and Paul is emphasizing belief, trust, faith. Action, belief, trust in 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 Jesus as the Messiah, as the Son of God, to those who have been draped in Old Testament theology. He wanted to teach them what the mystery of God was in Christ, and he tries to get them to be faithful, 
to be faithful to, to Jesus. James comes along and James puts emphasis on on work. It says faith without work is dead. He, 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 if you read the book, the short book, it says, you know, faith that does nothing, or faith, faith that does not do the things that we would um, expect of Jesus. Faith that does nothing is, is nothing. Dead faith is nothing. Faith ought to do something. That's what James says. And therefore, um, it has been it's been looked down by even people like um, historical greats, Luther. Because I suppose doctrine is more important to some people than practical. I mean, let me, let me see your faith. I, I don't want to hear you talk about it if I can't see it in your actions. Don't, don't tell me the Lord will make a way and you fall apart every time something gets in your way. Faith on trial. I like the way the writer um, places himself. If this is the literal brother of Jesus, there are a number of James and we commentaries have not come to consensus on which James this is, but if this is the literal brother of Jesus, then this man has, has been with Jesus, you know. He knows Jesus from childhood. And, um, but if you look at what he says, that knowledge, that relationship with the Lord, uh, if he is that great preacher, leader uh, of the church um, mentioned in Bible history, in the history of Christianity, when he writes, he humbles himself. He does not allow the relationship to have him lifted up. So when he writes to his, his brethren, he writes to them as brethren. He does not use I'm the, um, the, 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 the potentate, I'm the reverend, I'm the bishop, I'm the, he said, I am the servant. I am the servant, and the Greek word doulos means, I am not, not just a servant, I am a bond servant. I am bought. He humbles himself, he does not come in uh, on his credentials. He doesn't come in on the influence of relationship. He lets them know he introduces him, himself as a servant. Bow. Amen. He means he's, he's humble and, 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 and he comes in, he introduces himself as a servant of God. Amen. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, he he, 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 he's humble and he, and he talks to those who are scattered globally, scattered around the world. Uh, and he wants to help them because, and help us because he knows that trouble is going to come our way. That our faith is going to be tested. There's nothing wrong with it. But he can He's writing to help those of us who, who, who encounter temptations. And the temptations I'm talking about are those things which make us question the existence or the ableness of God. The reality of the presence of God being uh, not just present but powerful based upon our situation. Amen. And, and, I mean, he's not talking about people trying to lose weight and, and they've been tempted by a donut. No, no, he's talking about people holding on to their faith in the true 
and the living God. He said things will come. You scatter. They're, they're not, you know, there are not a lot of you uh, on your job in, in the place that you and you you're surrounded by 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 things that will test your faith. And it happens in diverse ways. So there's two things I want to talk about tonight, this evening. I want to tell you about first I want to tell you about um um the fact of your trial, the fact, you know, the fact of the fact, it's a fact of trial. And he says it in the text that I read. He, he tells us to count it all joy when. Hmm? Not if, not maybe, not just in case. But what he suggests to us is those of us who follow the Lord Jesus Christ and try to, you know, treat everyone right and try to live in a way uh, that we're responsible to God and everyone else. We're trying to trying to love people who won't love us, uh, trying to do for people who won't help us, trying to think good things about people who are saying bad things about us. He 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 says he says to us when, not if. He suggests that. Our relationship with God is going to be tested. I know he's right. I, I, I know he's right. I, I know he's right. And we have to learn. We have to learn this. Uh, I talked not long ago about how to have a good relationship with God. And it does should not uh, be predicated upon things going good for us all the time. Or, you know, the rain never falls on our place. And then, let me just say something to you. If it rains all the time, you'll eventually be a swamp. But if all you get is sunshine, you'll eventually be a desert. So God balances our lives. So we get a little rain, a little sunshine, a little rain as needed, a little sunshine, you know. And so, so it's a fact, regardless of your position, regardless of your, your relationship, your influence, regardless of who it is you know, or how much money you have, or where you live, or what political stripe you have, if you live in this world, your faith in God will be tested. Yeah, just get ready for it. Amen. Get, as they say, prayed up for it, you know. Some things are going to come that are going to rock your faith foundation. And see if you are what you think you are. Amen. It's called quality control. You know what I'm saying? And what quality control does? Quality control, it checks the product to ensure that the product will live up uh, to the spec specification. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it reminds me of, of a missile that I worked in. It had to have a luncher to be lunched off, and they would they would test that lunch and see how many tons of pressure it could take because the the, the missile had to, to have thrust to get where it was going. Amen. So they would test the the launching pad to ensure it didn't give away under the pressure of the thrust from the missile being fired. Amen. And our faith is like that. God, God allows our faith to be tested. So when the thrust, amen, when the thrust hits us, amen, we won't fall apart. We'll keep moving. That platform, that launcher, that the foundation of the faith has to be correct. And I said something then. Your faith has to be well founded. It can't be founded in things. Can be founded in people. It can't rest upon stuff. You have to have your faith. So one writer said, "My faith is in nothing less than Jesus Christ." Yeah, yeah. So the things that we depend upon, the things that we cherish, can be those things that are used to try our faith. How many people do I know? who have faltered in faith because they lost a loved one. How many times have you come across people who've given up on God 
because a close one died. How many have given up on faith because they got an illness that they thought they shouldn't have because they were doing all the stuff. They were, you know, doing the religious dot the I and cross the T and paying the tithes and treating people right. Trouble still came. He, he, he says, he said, count it joy. There's a reason why he's saying it. It sounds like it's a little bit um, ridiculous to, to count it all joy uh, when your faith is on trial, but there's a reason for it. The more it's tried, the more it's tested, the more it can endure. A Amen. Amen, Holy Ghost. Right there, right there. Well, 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 the reason why some people do not get upset, do not get discombobulated based upon the issues of our time is because they've been through some stuff. God has brought them through some stuff that they didn't know how to get through before. God brought them through that. So if God brought them through that, they can rely on God or do rely or have confidence that God going to get us through COVID-19. Help me here, Holy Ghost. They they don't get fall apart, get scared, start popping pills. And, no, 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 no. They're reasonable. Don't get me wrong. They're not callous, but they know God's going to make a way. They're not going crazy at their home. They're not, they're not talking about, let us get out of here. You're messing with our freedom. Man. No, no. They know God's at work. They may not know what he's up to, but we know that he's up to something in this global situation. Just faith. It's going to be tried. Hmm? Stretch your word. Everyone who um, followed God has had to go through something. They had to cry some. Some have lost life. Others limb. For just following God. For those of us who think God just going to run bill us out all the time. Forget about that. And often he's, he's setting us up through our trials. For the real deal that's going to come down the road. It's a fact. That's all, that's all I want to tell you. It is a fact. My brothers and my sisters. It's a fact. Job was right when he said, man that's born of woman of a few days and they full of trouble. Trouble's going to come your way. Child of God. If, if, you, if you came to the Lord trying to hide from trouble, you're in the wrong place. Amen. If you, if you come to church thinking that people are not going to talk about you, you're not going to have some issues. You're in the wrong place. They shouldn't. You're right. But if that's your mindset, if your mindset is a, it was a mindset that believes that God on my side, everything going to be, no, no. Your faith in God will be tried. That's a fact of trials. It is a fact. Now, not only that, have joy because there's fruit of the trial. There's a fact of trial. It's on trial. It's dealing with the um, uh, when, not the if. But there's also the fact. I, I, I like I like this text because it also in, in it also tells who you know on a trial you get to dealing with the. Who, what's, when, and, and how's, and all that. And faith on trial has a who, and that's, he's writing to all of God's people who are scattered. That's, that's the who, all of us. All of us. Where you live has nothing to do with it. What your religious stripe is has nothing to do with it. But all of us, all of us, he said, my brethren, my, he's talking about the whole house, the whole family of God are going to go through trials. One thing for one and another for another, but we're going to have our faith uh, tried. You just count it joy because there is fruit. There's something that comes out of what I go through. Amen. I wouldn't be me had I not gone through what I went through. 
Now, you may not appreciate that. Too often, we want people to be us without going through, especially our children. We want them to be us, but we haven't, and for for right reason, we don't want them to go through what we went through. Amen. Amen. And you, you can't expect your children to understand um, you or, or appreciate things you appreciate. Then you're getting upset with them. They they haven't been exposed to the trials. I'm talking to myself now. I can't get discombobulated because they don't understand what I came through and they don't seem to appreciate. God has a way of dealing with them in their own issues. But the fact here is uh, all try, all faith is going to be tried. I'm closing. But there is fruit from the trial. There's fruit from the trial of your faith. Look, 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 look at the text. And he, he, he says, you're going to fall into all kinds. The word divers mean um, both many and different kinds. Can't get you one way. The devil ain't at you one way. He'll come another way. But he says, uh, rejoice. And all he means here is, is don't get depressed. and Don't get suicidal. And don't get out of your mind. Amen. Because faith actually means you know the Lord's going to work it, work it out. But then he goes on to say, know this. Um that the testing or trying of your faith is going to be helpful for you because it's going to make you patient. That's where you don't get nervous and erratic and running all around. No, no, no. no. It's going to give you patient, spiritual patience and physical patience, meaning that, 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 that you're not not jittery and upset and stomach hurt and all that kind of stuff. Bubbles in my stomach, not sneeze, not no, 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 no. And what happens is your previous encounters with struggles and tests help you become uh, more ma mature, mature in 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 the faith factor. And 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 so he says, rejoice and don't get depressed and don't get suicidal. Uh, because those, that situation, that dilemma is making you a better servant uh, for the Lord. To the degree that at some point, child of God, someone should have said to you somewhere along your Christian journey, someone should have asked you, how do you put up with? How do you tolerate? How do you keep a smile on your face? How do you keep speaking to so? How is it that you're so nice to such ugly folk? How can you do that? That's because you've been through some things. Amen. Amen. And the fruit of the faith, he says, is patient. He said, but let it have its perfect way. God, God, God allows us to encounter struggles and and, and trials and, and tribulations so that we can be complete, we can be full. We don't waver in our relationship with the Lord. Regardless of what happens, I know God got it all in the, in the hollow of his hand. What do you do when your child, when your faith is being tried? How do you respond? How do you conduct yourself how do you carry yourself when 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 do you do you mope and drop your head and fold your arms and quit going to church quit giving god praise that's what the devil that's what the devil wants. he said count it all joy uh when you fall into different temptations when uh, you get tripped up by life situations and find your faith uh, being tested by situations and circumstances. He told me to tell you tonight that, that faith is on trial. And the question is, will you be found guilty like Jesus was when they tried him all night, uh, that, that Friday night? And, and when they marched him up, uh, marched him up, 
of Via Della Rosa, he, he hung in there like some of the many and most of the prophets they hung. They kept their faith even though it was being tried. They kept it even unto death. And Jesus said, he who holds out even unto death, that one shall be saved. Uh, wh what do you do when your faith is being tried? Well, there are some recommendations. Sometimes, sometimes I sing. Sometimes, sometimes I pray. Sometimes I just, just meditate. And sometimes I just stand in place because trials will get so difficult. Uh, tests will get so difficult. I can't go forward, but I tell you what I do. I do an old military move. That was a move you had, you know, you had a left flank, you had a right flank, you had a backward march, you had a forward march, but we all also had a mark time. Mark time, man, we just, we just marching right in place. Every now and then trouble have me marching in one place, but because I know the Lord will make a way. I just hold on and be like Jesus on the cross when he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. Faith is on trial, but it's going to work. A perfect work. It's going to make you better. It's going to make you a better servant for the Lord. You'll be able to let somebody else know, baby, don't worry, been that, done that, got a t-shirt, cup, ink pen. If I can do it, you can do it. I know the Lord is able. I'm walking evidence. I'm living evidence. I'm a testimony to the fact that you can get through with the Lord on your side. What do you do when your faith is on trial? It's a fact, child of God. Your faith shall be tried. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But there's fruit on the other side. He'll give you double for your trouble. Just hang in there. Stay in the right Christian lane of character, conduct, and behavior. Trusting that God's going to make a way. Amen. The Lord spoke to you tonight. You're another sound of my voice and You've not given your life to Christ. This is an opportunity. And what I want you to do is to just repeat after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I accept Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. I give his, my life to him. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've done that, what I want you to do is at the right moment, the right time, when we're able to, I want you to find a place, a loving place, a place of loving fellowship that's expressed in the behavior of the people where the word of God is taught, where it challenges, convicts, I want you to join that. Get baptized. And raised to a new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Until we meet again, my brothers and sisters, you be blessed.